What's up guys, it's Gaze here. Oh man, this is never a good sight. The Rock with a cowboy hat? So The Rock's back at it again with his Twitter promos, and he is completely unhinged. This guy's got beef with Cody, Seth, Pharaoh, standards and practices. So for those of you who didn't see it, before SmackDown, and we'll get to that later, The Rock cut another promo on Twitter, and this time he was in an empty mesquite rodeo arena. So the cowboy hat makes a little bit more sense now. But he's just going off on Seth, going off on Cody, going off on Cody's dog. And that's the line for me. That is the line. Many don't know, but last year I had to put my dog down from childhood. And it was a tough time for me. It was a tough time for the family. So I don't like all these strays that Cody's dog's been catching. You see what I did there? Ah, like and subscribe. So there are a few interesting things to take away from this Twitter promo. The Rock pretty much trashed Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins' promo from Monday Night Raw, said they didn't go hard enough, essentially. And personally, I think so too. They didn't have that fire in that promo that this rivalry needs. Now last week during Friday Night SmackDown, there were a lot of interruptions throughout the broadcast just because the fans were chanting a lot of things you can't say on TV. And there were also a lot of signs that you can't show on on TV. But The Rock actually took this and spun it. Instead of that being the case, he said that the TV networks were just not ready for what he had to say and they were scared and had their finger on the center button, which is actually a pretty good spin on it. However, this caused The Rock to start beef with the TV network's standards and practices. I guess not the TV networks themselves, just their standards and practices. In efforts to prove that he's the real people's champ, he also mentioned that half of America wants him to run for president and The Rock's not even a politician. The Rock hates politics! And I thought that was a pretty decent bar. Now this led to the main event segment on Friday Night Smackdown. And I'm not gonna lie, it was mostly entrances. And speaking of that, The Rock has a new entrance and it's kind of inspired by Black Adam. And I find this pretty interesting because Black Adam is one of the few appearances that The Rock had in a movie where he was the bad guy or the closest thing to a bad guy. Also, this movie was one of his biggest failures. So it seems he's bringing one of his biggest failures into one of his most successful WWE runs ever. And by success, I mean ratings and profits earned. There's a lesson in there somewhere. I'm sure you'll find it. So another thing to note during his entrance, he kind of stormed past Roman Reigns to pose in the opposite corner. And Roman did react to that. Like he did show some type of frustration about that. So as the promo starts, they're doing that camera angle again where they show Roman in the foreground and Rock in the background. It's good foreshadowing, but it's also a pretty good camera angle. I'm not gonna lie. They're most likely using that a bunch in promos. Seth and Cody enter through the crowd. Now this is them kind of pleading their case about being the people's champ. They're actually willing to walk amongst the people. When was the last time you saw The Rock go through the crowd or Roman go through the crowd? And for The Rock, it's kind of understandable because his entrance was never through the crowd, but Roman specifically started his career entering through the crowd. Now Seth had tape over his mouth and then ripped it off during the entrance. The cameras didn't catch it. In fact, it looked like they thought Cody and Seth were going to come out the same tunnel, but they came out of two different ones. So there is a few seconds of them trying to find Seth through the crowd. Like I said, this was more entrance than promo. And that's actually not a bad thing. Notice they're able to still tell stories between all four of these guys without them even speaking to each other yet. All types of foreshadowing and symbolism going on. By the way, what the hell is Seth Rollins wearing? And I get that's part of his gimmick, and I've even complimented some of his fits, but I can't get with this one, bro. He looks like a stack of tires. Anyway, Cody starts off with some gold medalist instigating. He said The Rock doesn't have authority, and that's why he acknowledged Roman Reigns as his tribal chief. And Seth actually interrupts The Rock to call him Mr. Midlife Crisis, and then accepts the challenge. And that's what we've been waiting on, to be honest like some fire from the baby faces because they were looking a bit too PC and PG. And speaking of PC, Roman called Seth a crossdresser and I'm sure that's gonna raise some eyebrows. Roman then displays his S tier manipulation skills and taunts Cody because Seth answers for him. That's when The Rock takes the mic, begins to run down Cody's family history, mentions that Cody is 20 years younger than his siblings, and then calls Cody a mistake. SmackDown ends with Cody finally slapping The Rock in the face. And when I say that, I mean it just abruptly ended. 
I saw some fan footage from after the show, and it turns out they just stare at each other and walk away. But yeah guys, it was a pretty interesting SmackDown this week overall. Things are definitely heating up and we got WrestleMania four weeks away I believe, so I'll definitely be having my predictions coming soon. Shout out to all my dog people out there, put your seatbelt on, and until next time, keep it kaze.